Oh, it's recording now. Great. So, children, for some reason tonight we have um, in the kids class we had um, network glitches, so it will just go off and on. Just to let you know, okay? If it's ever in the middle, if something happened, then I will reconnect. Don't worry, okay? Just stay on board. Good. So I'm so happy to have you tonight. So I'm having Damola. How are you, darling? Good to see you. Fine, ma. Good. So I'm having my darling Sharon. <laughs> Sharon, how are you? I'm fine. So where is your brother? Is he not connected tonight? He's not at home. Oh, he's not at home. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, probably. Anyway, I'm recording the class. So, and I'm having Emanuela. Hey, Emanuela, let me see your face. So, you didn't connect last week, darling. It's been a while. God bless you. Good to have you on board. God bless you. And I'm having um, Ife Oluwa <laughs> and Ine Oluwa. Wow. Hey. Lovely. I'm so happy to see you tonight. <laughs> Good evening. So, they join our um, kid class. So, God bless you, darling. God bless you. So, um. Oh, Damola, I'm so happy you're able to connect. You didn't miss tonight's class. God bless you, my love. God bless you. So, um, let me quickly chase on uh, Miriam. For some reason, I have to chase Miriam every week. Let me try to chase her for the last time. And next week, I won't chase. Where are you, Miriam? Miriam, and I'll put, where are you, Miriam? Olawale. Uh, who do we have there? Zara. Bihana. Um, Lela and um, I will send a message to Wisdom and let me just Merit. So children, um, good to have you again. Uh, and I'm so happy you're able to connect on time. And uh, tonight we'll continue with our Bible uh, chapter. So uh, tonight we'll be looking at uh, Mark chapter 14. So I remember I gave you Mark chapter 13 as an um, assignment last week. So if you've missed all this chapter, make sure you go back, you know, um, after this class or probably um, before the next program, make sure you read those um, chapter you've missed so like I said it's just a story of the life of Jesus Christ you know so what we are reading we're just trying to know Jesus Christ better so you know if we say we are follower of Jesus Christ we are Christian oh my god what's happening to this my oh can you see me children is it back now I don't know what's happening to the um, I can't see you. Oh, you can't see. Can you see me now? Is it okay now? Can you, can you see me? Yeah, good. Yeah. Sorry, I, I've been experiencing this. I don't know if it's from Zoom, but I'm believing it's not from Zoom because if it's from Zoom, then we should be experienced together. So it has to do with my network. So if this passes, I will have to speak with them. So like I was saying, um, we are trying to know more about Jesus because we believe in Jesus. We are Christian. We want to know more about Jesus because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus is our standard. Is Jesus is who we should be following, okay? So you can't follow Jesus anti joy because anti joy is human being. So anti joy is limited in a way. So um, why I mean by limited is uh, no one is perfect. So but it's only Jesus that is perfect. So Jesus should be our motivator. So anti joy might be teaching you about um, the word of God, the Bible, but it's just God using anti joy. But the person we need to follow is Jesus Christ. So we are all limited in our ways and we are all working towards perfection. So, and, um, and that is the reason why we need to be reading the Bible just to understand Jesus better. So if you, you know, there's a lot of Christians um, today, people who get converted, they born, uh, you know, they call them born again, you know. And um, if, you, if you say you are following Jesus Christ and you don't know what is in the book of Matthew, you don't know what is in Mark, so you would ne you'd never know, uh, you know the life of Jesus Christ. And you need to understand how this person that you are following, this man called Jesus Christ, how he has lived his life when he was on heart. So that would be like a, you know, like a standard for you, you not know, to follow Jesus Christ. We've learned a lot about, um, 
in the previous verses, um, chapters, where um, how the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the chief priests, how they tackle Jesus Christ, how, how they ridicule him, how they try to make him fall. And we see how Jesus Christ, we see how Jesus Christ has replied, how Jesus Christ was able to manage your situation. So we, um, as our children of God, we might pass through some stuff, you know, in our Christianity journey. It might not be nice, it might be probably when we get, when we marry or when, you know, it might even be now, you know, where we face some challenges where people, you know, um, people ridicule us because we are Christian. People look down on us because we are Christian. People feel like we are not sociable because we are Christian. People feel like, oh, you are boring. So, so, but the life of Jesus will motivate you because you see that Jesus Christ even passed through us. Jesus Christ, who is the son of God, who has come, you know, to the world, you know, to deliver us. From our problems, from issues, from from our sins, who has come to give us life and to give us an abundance. Even if this same Jesus Christ passed through hell in the hand of men, you know, people that he has come to die for, how much more us? So, knowing um, the Bible, reading the, this part of the Bible, you know, will help us, you know, to be able to relate, you know, with human beings, to see, you know, how Jesus Christ has, you know, has lived his life. So don't think, uh, don't feel bored. Don't feel like oh my God, it's just Bible reading us. No, no, no. You know when we read it together, we try to explain. Then we learn from one another. Most time when I ask a question, I learn from you children because of most most time every one of us will make sense because when you are telling me what you plan, then I'm learning as well. So don't um, feel like oh my God, uh, it's so boring. No, and then I'm trying to introduce uh, action learning. So we tried this sometimes a uh, few more with months ago. You know where we did. Um, this action learning. So it's just um, we look, we watch a video and we see how you know any video you know that's related to the Bible, what we've been reading about the life of Jesus, about Christianity, and then we will um, we will look at the video, we will analyze it. You know what happened, how the person could have you know interacted well. Or sometimes we can use a real life story where I can tell you what I've done in the week that I feel was not right. You get probably this is what I've done. Um, probably this is what I've reacted in the situation. So I can share the story. I can ask any one of you. I can ask Dami, um, Damola, what, what, um, do you want to tell us something that happened this last week that you feel you could have done better? So she tell us the story. Then we look at it. We put ourselves in our shoe. Some of us we might agree with how she has reacted. Some of us we might not agree. So in that in that kind of you know situation, then we interact. Then we can reason together. There's no 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 one. Um, there's no wrong or right um, answer. So we look at what's the Bible saying after we've argued. After after we've analyzed it, okay. If I was probably you were coming out of the bus and you wanted to enter the bus and the bus driver almost jammed you know the door at you and you feel really bad and you just didn't uh, when you were leaving you didn't say thank you, like you know people you feel really hungry. So some people might some people might say, okay, if I were in that situation, what I'm going to do is, well, I would feel like probably the man, the, uh, probably it wasn't intentional. So when I'm leaving, I will have just say, well, thank you, you know, just, you know, to clear my conscience, at least I don't want anybody to make me sin. Uh, some people will tell you that, no, I feel really hot, I feel really bad, it's really good, um, it's, um, um, some people will claim that, um, yeah, it's normal to be hungry, but after the event, I forget about it. I try to forgive the forgive drivers, and I I, I don't really have a um, negative mind against drivers because of what happened. Because of that experience, I just try to let go and I move on. So, and then we look at what would Jesus Christ will have done in that situation. So something like that. So I'm trying to introduce that. Probably next week we test it. We see if it works. So next week, so prepare everybody. It's going to be very interactive. Prepare to talk. If you don't, I don't want anyone to be quiet. No, I want to see how you're going to react. And I want it to be real. You know, don't say, I'll just say how you're going to react. So then, then we will summarize it and we go with the best, best approach. So that's about our action learning. So coming to tonight, um, we'll be looking at the book of Mark, Mark chapter 14. So let us pray, children. Close your eyes. Let's pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everlasting Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the grace given to us to connect. We thank you, Lord, for giving us life. We thank you, Lord, because you have been our God, even from the beginning of this pandemic till now. And we thank you because we know that you see us through. Father, Lord, we pray tonight that you have your way in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you teach us your word yourself in the name of Jesus. And we pray that after tonight, oh Lord, you fill us with joy and happiness in the name of Jesus. And give us the grace to continue, you know, to be like you in the name of Jesus. We pray you help us. We pray we're not weary, we're not backslide in the name of Jesus. 
He gives us the grace to continue mm. and to know you more. And we know you more in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. So, children, sometimes when we are praying, you can meet yourself and say, hey, man, and then meet yourself back, okay, after the prayers. So, um, yeah, so we'll be looking at um, Inyolu and Zara, you've connected to the teenager class. That's fine if you want to join us. That's beautiful, but no distraction. If you distract us, until we remove you from the class, okay? Good. So, now let's open our Bible to the book of Mark, chapter 14. And I will call uh, Emanuela, we start reading. So, we are going to share, share the verse within ourselves. So Emmanuel, now we start reading, and when I ask you to stop, then uh, you will explain. Okay? So make sure when you are reading, your mind is there. Or I can call anyone, you know, to to explain. Okay? Good. So, uh, Emmanuel, now meet yourself, darling, and read. Mark chapter 14. And straightway in the morning, the chief priest held a con with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are thou the king of the Jews? And he answering said unto him, Thou sayest it. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold, how many things that they witness against thee. Also, Jesus where are you reading, answered, darling? Where are you reading? Yeah, where are we? Yeah, where are you reading? Mark Emmanuel? chapter 15. No, 14. Mark chapter 15. No, you're reading 14. Oh, oh 14, yeah, darling. Because I was just wondering, like, yeah, 14. Thank you. After two days was the feast of the Passover, and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sought at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she brake the box and poured it on his head. And there was some that had in the de indication within themselves and said why was this waste of the ointment made for it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have given to the poor and they murmured against her and jesus said let her alone why trouble ye her she has wrought a good work on, on me for ye have the poor with you always and whensoever ye will ye may do them good but me ye have not always she has done that she could she is co come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying verily i say unto you whether soever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world this also that she has done shall be spoken of for a mem memorial memorial of her thank you darling and thank you Thank you. God bless you. Let's clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. So I'm just going to call one of you to explain that part. Who is on that Zoom user? Who is on that Zoom user? Oh, okay. You didn't name yourself, Miriam. Okay, that's fine. So do you want to who wants to explain that part? If you know you understand that part, that's if you don't understand, don't worry, I will have. If you know you want to try. So I'm just going to call Damola. I know Damola will try. Let's give that difficult one for Damola. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's listen. Continue, darling. So, um, what, so for what I'm looking at, I'm thinking that, so that lady, she came over, she had the box of, um, um, was it oil, ointment, oil, ointment, ointment. then yeah. she broke it over Jesus' head, and it was very, it was very like, I think, because they were saying that, um, that, that could be used on a homeless person. So I was thinking that was like a very cheap one and not very not very fragile and precious as as um they they thought it should be. And Jesus said that anything can be he was explaining that anything can be accepted because she has done something for for the Lord and 
touched and it will be remembered and it will and something good will happen for her. Good. So let's start for Damola. Let's start for her. Let's start for Damola. Good. Great attempt. Great attempt. Good. So what that place is just trying to explain is um what the lady has done. Even the lady herself, the, uh, she, I'm not sure she um um at the point I don't I I I, I can't uh, I I'm not sure she know the gravity of what she has uh, what what you know she did you know then because what she has done is she she has um. She, whatever she has done is like a is, is like a parable. She's just what she has done is um is is talking about the the the, the barrier of Jesus Christ. So when you um to Jesus, it is it has more meaning than just someone you know when someone pours something you know on on you you know sometimes you know um it's it does not really it probably just pour it to honor you. But she did that anyway, in her own sense, you know, to honor Jesus Christ. The person that, you know, this man has been so lovely, that has been teaching them about God, that has healed the sick, you know, that has helped, the, you know, uh, raised the leopard, you know, you know, th that has done so many things. So she came with that, you know, with that in mind. But what she has done has more meaning to the kingdom of God than what, that, than everyone among them. That was what Jesus Christ was trying to explain to them. So she has done that in the memorial. So he, he has done that, you know, to just to um, just to uh, point like a pointer to the death of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is going to die. So that's what that's the meaning, the basic meaning of what he has done. But they don't know. They just, they just thought, oh, she, why she she wasting this oil? And they in their home because they are not in spirit because you know they, because they've uh, interpreted it because if they're in spirit they will they will understand as well. So sometimes we need children. We need sometimes um, things don't just don't just happen. Probably sometimes you want to go out and you just feel reluctant. You don't feel like going. It might be God speaking to you because probably if you go out, something might happen. You know, something like that. So I'm just saying, I'm just bringing this into, to, I'm just applying this to our our life today. So what has that what that lady has done is more, you know, it has more meaning than how they, you know, they were looking at how she's, she's wasting money and just Christ was just trying to come to their level to correct them that don't worry. You know, every time it's not uh, because the poor will always be with you anyway. You know, the poor, the needy, they will always be with you. But what this little woman has done, this woman, let me just read that. Um, um, where is it? So the poor, and they said, and and you just said, let her alone. Why trouble her? She had wrought a good work on me. So just I know the meaning because just I know he has done something really great, something phenomenal, something that um. That that has been predestined, so it has been predestined that before Jesus Christ died, someone would pour an, a very expensive ointment on Jesus Christ. So she has she is fulfilling the scriptures. So she is doing the will of God. But they they were just there hungry, like why? What's happening? Why is she wasting you know the ointment? And that was what um uh, Jesus Christ was trying to correct them that don't worry if it's about the poor, the poor is always going to be here. But I'm going to die. I'm not going to be here forever. So. That they should leave the woman alone and just has said something that's really that's um uh, that is uh, really really um that is great just i said very let's say unto you whatsoever gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world this also she has done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her and this is what we are saying today so we are feeling you just as i said that everywhere that they are talking about him they will talk about this woman and we are talking about this woman today we are talking about the good deed this woman has done. So this woman has gone extra mile. Probably that's the best thing he, he, she has to offer Jesus Christ at that point in time. And she has brought it, you know, and, you know, poured this uh, on the feet of Jesus Christ just to honor Jesus Christ, you know, to, to, to tell Jesus Christ that we appreciate everything he has done. She was doing that, you know, out of her own little way, you know, just like uh, um, uh, in the Bible when they were giving offering, you know, that's on that part. I'm not sure we've read the story, but we, we read, read it along the line. So the, this, there were a lot of people going to the hotel, giving offering, and there's this woman that had just two um two pens on her. I use pens as an example because that's what we are used to. Two pens, and that was everything she had, and she gave it on the altar. And Jesus Christ said that was the only woman that that was the one that that gave the most. So because she she is not giving out of the little, you know, some people can give ten pounds or one million pounds, so they won't even feel it. But this woman, you know, she gave everything that she. You know that uh, she had then so and this is an example of what this woman has done he has come to honor jesus christ and just christ was just trying to tell them that um the, everything that this woman has done she has done it for the fulfillment of the scripture 
and the woman will never be forgotten. So um, today we can see that we are discussing about her. So um, Miriam. So Miriam, we are going to read from verse ten. So this time around, Miriam will read and um, Inyolua will explain. So Miriam, continue. Make sure you are paying attention as well to me in case when I ask you to stop so that you can stop, okay? Go ahead. Which Danny. chapter is it? Oh, okay. Um, now I'm just going to call someone else. Um, in your lower read. Which chapter is it? So we are reading uh, Mark chapter 14 from verse 10. So in your lower. Unmute yourself in your lower and read. Not in your lower baby boy. In your lower on our senior, yeah. So, you know, then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve disciples, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. When they heard this, they were delighted and promised to give him money and began looking for opportune time to betray Jesus. Hmm. The last Passover. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when, as was customary, they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and the man carrying the jar of water will meet you. Follow him, follow him, and say to the owner of the house, he enters, the teacher asks, Where is my guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upstairs room, furnished and ready. With oh. Continue. With carpets and dining couches. Prepare the supper for us there. The disciples left and went to the city and found everything just as he had told them. And they prepared for the they prepared the Passover. While it was evening, he came with the twelve disciples. While they were reclining at the table, Jesus said, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, that one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be great and deeply distressed, and to say to him one by one, Surely not I. And he replied, It is one of the twelve disciples, one who is dipping bread in the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes to the cross, just as it is written in the scripture of him. But woe to that man who by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. The Lord suffered. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. Okay, darling, Give before we go into that, thank, thank you, thank you. Let me just explain that. Before we go into the verse 22, so Miriam, I believe you are there now, so you read from 22, okay? But before you read, uh, Mark 14, 22, Miriam, that's where you are reading from. Before you read, so uh, the last part, thank you so much. Let's clap for Ini Oluwa. Let's clap for Ini. We're going to clap for Ini. We're going to clap for Emanuela and Damola, people that contributed in the past. Thank you so much, darling. So what happened is, um, you know, in the in that um, chapter, um, you know, chapter fourteen, verse four. So they were feast of Passover, and then we have the sheep priests, the scribe, you know, the Pharisee. They were there. They were looking for ways, you know, where they can kill Jesus Christ. They want to kill Jesus Christ. They don't want. They believe that if they take Jesus Christ among people, that people will fight them. People will can stole them to death. So they were just looking for a corny way, you know, to where how they can get jesus christ and kill jesus christ because they were so bitter and from where we read the last time you know we saw how jesus christ went to the temple where he chased people that were buying and selling so they still have bitterness against jesus christ they hate jesus christ even though they know jesus christ was doing the right thing jesus christ was from god and so on but there's this hatred in them you know they are so wicked and i'm telling you children there are a lot of wicked people you know today you know in our in our daily lives but God, that's why we need to be praying that God will continue to expose them, rebuild them, disgrace them, chase them away from us, remove them from all our lives. So it's really important because these Pharisees, these people, they are there. So they are there today. So they were there, then they were sorting the life of Jesus Christ. 
and um, fortunate, unfortunately, one of Jesus Christ's disciples, you know, which is Judas, decided to betray, betray Jesus Christ. So um, I, I don't know what prompted Judas, but you know, because he is a son of perdition, because uh, Judas, anyway, is met, uh, anyway, you know, is, you know, so people, people that are called um, um, son of perdition are people that have chosen hell, even from the beginning. So this man, as, as, as he says to Jesus, you know, some of us today, we might be saying, oh my God, let's say I know um, Jesus Christ. Probably, just give me one second to put off the heat, I'm boiling. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, children. Yeah. So, you know, some of us today, we might be... You know, we might be saying that, uh, ah, I wish I knew Jesus Christ. Yes, I was in Jesus Christ's time. Yes, I can die with Jesus Christ. I'm so happy. Yes, I was able to see Jesus Christ. You know, this man was with Jesus Christ. He saw the miracles. He saw every good thing, you know, that Jesus Christ has done. But still, in his mind, want to betray Jesus Christ. So he decided to betray Jesus Christ. That was what they said. Uh, that was what verse 10. Okay, you know, I never let your mind be here because I can call you. You're ready so, to... So read it for us. So uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is Carlos, one of the disciples, went to the sheep priest to betray him unto them. And when they heard, they were glad. They were so happy because they were actually looking for someone anyway who will sold Jesus Christ to them. And they promised him money. They promised Judas Carlos money. That's verse 11. And he sought and they, and he sought how he might conveniently betray him. So since then, uh, Judas Carlos continued to monitor Jesus Christ to see how he can betray Jesus Christ. To show Jesus Christ to these people, they are they knew Jesus Christ, but they were looking for opportunity. So, um, and if those if it actually fall into their Passover time when the, um, they were trying to, you know, when um, during the in the feast of Passover, so Jesus Christ was with his disciple. Probably they were just uh, going to a city and they met a man, and Jesus Christ was trying to, was speaking to the uh, told the man, gave the man instruction to prepare a place for them where they can have feast together. You know, has um as a group jesus christ and his disciple so uh, as jesus christ said to the disciple going to the city you find a man tell them to make ready on um, the passover that's verse 16 and as and as jesus christ has said you know and it happens that way and they went to the city they found some with the man that just kind of referred them to and they were able to get a place set you know for the for the passover so, and um, we're about to read it now. Um, Miriam will be reading that uh, just to explain what actually happened during the Passover. So, and this is some of us, now I know some of us we've been, some of our churches have been doing like, um, they call it um, Holy Communion. So this is where the Holy Communion comes from in the Bible. So the, if you want to know what's the meaning of Holy Communion, why are they giving us bread and, you know, this is where. So you need to pay attention now. Okay, so you can understand the mystery behind the Holy Communion. So this is where the Holy Communion happened. So something happened during, uh, in um, before that time when they were waiting, you know, to eat the bread and you know to drink. Uh, just guys start int, um, gave hint, you know, to the disciple to tell them that one of them will betray him. Because Jesus Christ is no ordinary human being, so it's like God anyway. So it's he it sees the head from the beginning. So just guys know everything, even what they are thinking. They had just guys know knew every at that time. So just guys told the disciple that one of you will betray me. If um, Judas has not been a, a child of perdition, you know, someone that is born to perish, at that stage, you're supposed to have changed his mind. If, for example, if you, God forbid, we won't have, we'll never be in that situation, probably you want to do something to someone and the person has told you that, hey, one of you want to do me evil. Do you, someone, do someone know if you want to betray, betray me. If the person, if the person that wants to do that evil had those kind of warning, he will have, he will have withdrawn himself. But because Judas Carlos is a very wicked man and he has born to die, and there's a lot of people today, you know, coming to our life today, you know, that they are, or that they've made up their mind that they are going to be destroyed. So these kind of people, we need to pray seriously that God deliver us from them because they are everywhere. They are in churches, they are in our streets, in our schools, everywhere because they, they know. Some of them, you tell them about salvation, they'll tell I don't believe in God, I don't believe in God. Yeah, and some they will pretend as if they are Christian, but they are not. They are just Judas Iscariot. They are there to betray people that follow Jesus Christ. They are there to destroy people. They are there, they are in our groups, they are everywhere today, you know. They're just there, they're just destroyers. So, like I said, children, we are reading today the life of Jesus Christ, what happened in his time, how someone poured oil on him, expensive oil. And people were so murmuring, people were just jealous that why is this so expensive? We can use it to take care of the poor. How Jesus Christ intervened. You know, you see the life of Jesus Christ. How Jesus Christ was planning, you know, you know, to have um um 
a feast with his disciple and one of them was you know planning secretly to betray jesus christ so these are just mystery you know of life these are what things that happen in our real life today so we are reading the life of jesus christ we will see how jesus christ has approached this let me tell you children jesus christ sh shouldn't have died because he has power you know to destroy to disgrace to counter uh, judas but because the purpose of jesus christ on heart is to die for our sins so whatever judas was trying to do he was actually helping jesus christ to fulfill his ministry so sometimes God allows some people, you know, they will, they will, be, they will want to disorganize us, they want to, you know, here and there, but at the end of the day, they are working for our sources. <laughs> what they think will destroy, God will change it. You know, probably somebody has gone, you know, to lie against you, blah, 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 and in his, his person's intention, is trying to destroy you, you know, so that other people will hate you and so on. And indirectly, the more you destroy, the more people like you. You know, God allows something like that. So... Judas Iscariot was actually working for the success of Jesus Christ. He was just working, you know, to, because Jesus Christ needed to die anyway, and Jesus Christ needed to die for our sins, and something needs to happen. And he, he thought he was doing evil to Jesus, but actually helping Jesus Christ to fulfill his destiny. So let's read um, 22, Miriam. And this time around, uh, like I can see Inyolua looking here and there, so Inyolua will explain this part. Inyolua, now you know you are explaining. Good, Miriam, read 22, darling. While they were eating, Jesus took some bread. He thanked God for it and then broke it. Then he gave it to his followers and said, Take it. This bread is my body. Then Jesus took a cup and he thanked God for it and gave it to the followers. All the followers drank from the cup. And Jesus said, This is my blood, which begins the new agreement that God makes with his people. This blood is poured out for many. I tell you the truth, I will not drink of any I will not drink of this fruit of the vine again until the day when I drink it in the new kingdom of God. They sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told the followers, You will all lose faith in me. It is written in the scriptures. I will kill the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Zechariah 13, 7. But when I rise from the when I rise from death, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said, All those followers may lose faith, but I will not. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, tonight you will say you don't know me. You will say this three times before the rooster crows twice. But Peter answered strongly, I will never say that, that I don't know you. I will even die with you. And all the other followers say, said the same thing. Jesus and his followers went to a place called Gethsemane. Yes, yeah. He said to his followers, sit here while I pray. Jesus told Peter, James, and John to come with him. Then Jesus began to be very sad and troubled. He said That's fine, darling. Full of sorrow. Thank you. That's fine. So the next person we read from. So who am I calling? I'm calling um Sharon. So Sharon will read from um thirty two. So that's where Sharon is reading from. So uh Nyolua, let me help you. I think we help you now. You know. You, but you might explain again. It depends on my mood, okay? So let me help you this time around. So just Christ called the what's in it? Abi ife oluwa. Where's ife? Is ife there, darling? Is ife sharing with you? She had a problem with it. Okay, um, tell tell. Okay, tell her to share with you because I was about to mention her name anyway. But that's fine. So she needs to share with you, okay? So anyway, um, what happened is um, like I said, um, that's uh, from 22 to 30, 30, some of us that we do, you know, um, Holy Communion in our church, that's the mystery behind it. So Jesus Christ um, was trying to prepare his disciples for his death. Jesus Christ was trying to empower them, you know, spiritually. So they thought they were eating bread, but it was more than bread. They thought they were drinking, you know, wine, but it was more than wine. So Jesus Christ said to them when he was breaking the bread, that this is my body I give to you. So Jesus Christ is trying to prepare them, prepare their mind that he's going, they will kill him, it will remain you, it will be like a sh when they take sh uh, shepherd from the sheep, you know, you know shepherd that guide sheep. So when they take the shepherd away, the sheep will be scattered all, all abroad. So Jesus Christ is trying, you know, to modify them. And that's what we do in church today. We say Holy Communion that, um, you know, we uh, just to set, re concentrate our heart, our mind, our soul to God. So that was what God was just Christ was telling them that they should do this anyway. Just Christ gave that instruction. So that's why we do it today in some churches. So churches believe in some they don't believe. Okay. 
So, but just as give a story that we continue to do this. So, and in fact, they even sang him. So, some of us now, you know, um, when we sing him in church, it has been in the Bible. So, that's why it's really important you are reading your Bible. So, you, if you read your Bible, some of the things we do today, you understand better. So, if you want to read or uh, understand that communion again, read this Bible. Or if you are using your device, you can use uh, read it from another, um, um, use NIV or... You know, a simpler, um, we have this, I forgot the name of this uh, uh, version. We have different versions that simplify, you know, your Bible so that you understand better. So if you are, King James is very complex, so you might not really understand. But when you read uh, NIV, you read, um, NIV is a little bit better. And this international, um, I've forgotten the name. So diff we have different versions that you can read to, to understand, you know, the word of God better. So you understand. So just Christ, as they were eating, just Christ was trying to remind them again that, um, she is going to die. They are going to come. They, they will capture him. And he said to them that most of them that they will deny him. So when they were saying, brother, no, I'm not going to deny you. I love you so much. Oh, never. So when you were saying Jesus Christ, Peter was like, no. Just like, um, verse 29, Peter said unto him, although all has been offended yet, although he was saying that even though everybody here denied you, I will never. I will never. It's like, you know, it's like, um, for example, if I say, Auntie Joy, do you know what? If everybody is not connecting next week, I will connect. I will connect. So you know, was just saying, <laughs> you know, Peter was just saying to Jesus Christ, even if everybody denied you, do you know what, Jesus? I am going to be there for you. I'm going to say I know you. I'll stand by you. Jesus Christ was like, don't worry, you will be, you, you, will, you will deny me three times. Jesus Christ told him that you particularly will deny me three times before the, um, let me read that verse. That is um, verse 30. Jesus Christ said unto him, Verily I say unto you, that, that this day, even in the in this night, in this today, before the crap the before the cock crown twice, you will deny me three times. So just guys tell them what will happen, but still he still don't believe and he spoke the more fervently. If I should die, if I, if I die with you, I will not deny you. We're just seeing the first story, just, was just smiling, and it came to pass. Peter actually denied Jesus Christ. Though, when she did did that, because she, she denied Jesus Christ out of fear, because she thought they were going to kill him. So they were like, one of them said, Oh, we knew you. You are a follower of Jesus Christ. Don't worry, we are going to read that very soon. And he said, No, oh, I've never heard that name before. I don't know this man. I don't know the man called Jesus Christ. So he did that three times. And he remembered what Jesus Christ told him. And he felt really bad. I do know what he did. He prayed for forgiveness. That's the difference between Judas and and um, Peter. Judas denied Jesus Christ three times. Oh, um, sorry. Peter denied Jesus Christ three times. Judas betrayed Jesus Christ once. Jude, um, Peter removed, repented. He felt really bad and he asked for God. He prayed, God forgive me. And Judas refused. Even though he has betrayed Jesus Christ, if he wasn't a son of destruction, perdition, he should have Cry to God, God have done this evil, forgive me. And it will have been forgiven. But he never did. Instead, he decided to commit suicide. So that's why today people commit suicide. If whoever takes his life or her life, I'm sorry. It's so difficult to tell the truth. You know, because people will say, don't judge, don't judge. Whoever takes his or her own life, the person has murdered himself. And whoever murdered, murder, murder is a sin. So, I don't want to judge like the people don't use it. I don't want to judge, but unfortunately, the person may not get to heaven. So that's why children, no circumstance must you ever. Sorry, because I'm debating that because I'm I want to pass a message across. Nothing on heart should happen to you to make you think of suicide or any other thing. Because whoever destroys his soul will perish for life. Let's learn from Peter. Peter felt disappointed that oh my god after what i've said to this man this man that loved me so much because jesus can love peter but still he went to god god i have sinned forgive me even though jesus christ said he has prayed anyway for peter is in matthew book of matthew he said he has prayed you know for peter so children we learn a lot you know about the life of jesus christ so let me just hold it there and uh, let um sharon continue from 32 so Shannon will continue and if you will explain. If you don't worry, I know you are struggling with your device. Join your sister, okay? Darling, don't worry. Join Ini. 
So Sharon, thirty two. And he came to a place which was named um, Gathsam Ani, and he said to his disciples, Sit ye here, while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John, and began to be sore amazed and be very heavy, and saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Carry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it was possible, the arrow might pass from him. He said, Abide, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. will. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping and saith unto Peter, Simon sleepeth thou, he does not thou watch one hour. Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, and spake the same word. And when he returned, he found them asleep again. But their eyes were heavy. Neither was they what to answer him. And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. It, it, it is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is created into the hands of sinners. Rise up, let us go. Lo, that he that betrayed me is at hand, and immediately while he yet yet speak, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and tree from the chief priests and scribes and the elders. And he had and he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, the same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straight away to him, and said, Master, Master, and kissed him. And he laid their hands on him, and took him. And one of them that stood by drew a sword, a small uh, servant of the high priest, and cut off his ear. <laughs> and Jesus answered and said unto them, Are ye come out as against us, thief with swords and with thieves, to take them, me? I was daily with you in the temple, teaching. And ye took me not, but the scriptures, scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled, and there fo followed him a certain young man, having a linen cloak cast about his neck, body, and the young man laid hold on him, and he left the linen cloak and fled from them naked. And they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were as simple of the chief priests, and the elders, and the scribes. And Peter followed him afar off, even into the palace of the high priest. And he sat with the servants, and warmed himself at the fire. And the chief priests and all the consuls saw of the faithness against Jesus to put him to death and found none. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. And there arose certain and bear false witness against him, saying, he heard him say, 
I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. When neighbor saw that the witness agreed together, and the high priest stood up in the Thank you, darling. Thank you, my Lord. God bless you. Thank you. So let's laugh for um, Sharon. Let's laugh for Sharon. Good, 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 good. I'm not sure we clap for the um, for Miriam. So let's laugh for her as well. Well done. God bless you. So children, um, well, that's the story. That past shows us the story of um, how Jesus Christ was betrayed and how they came, you know, to take Jesus Christ away. And Jesus Christ says some things there that. Well, just telling them because when they came, they came with uh, with axe, with knife, with everything. You know, when they wanted to come and take Jesus Christ away, yes, I was telling them that. But I was always with you in the temple, preaching, doing everything with you. Why do you have to come with you know with you know with a uh, sword and every other thing? And we saw how um, Judah betrayed Jesus Christ. He went to Jesus Christ and he kissed Jesus Christ. You know, he shows Jesus Christ that we want to prove that he loved Jesus Christ, but he actually has as an agenda. So a lot of things, you know, children, I pray may God help us, may we be wiser than our enemies. You know, a lot of people we will find in life, they, some will come in form of friends, you know, and, you know, and with time they will manifest who they are. So don't be disappointed um, when you find this kind of people in the journey of your life, you know. Judas was part of um, Jesus Christ's disciples, you know, people that follow Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ's group. But yet, he still betrayed Jesus Christ. You know, he, he came in disguise to kiss Jesus Christ. He has told them whoever is kissed is Jesus Christ, so they should take him. You know, and he did that. And um, well, we um, over the over, over the later part of the map, we explain what actually happened to him because later he felt really bad of what he has done and he killed himself. So um, well, why Peter denied Jesus Christ? Like I said, three times. And he wept bitterly and he repented. So, this part, as uh, the Bible chapter, I will call on Damola now to to read um, the, uh, the last part. And probably, if you we we explain because I've seen her walking on a on, on a on a camera. So that's fine. So if you will explain that but, uh, last part. Um, but everything we've read tonight is uh, just telling us about the lifestyle of Jesus Christ, what happened towards the death of Jesus Christ, different events that happened, how a lady came, poor ultimate on Jesus Christ, expensive one just to honor Jesus Christ. And how people felt about it and how Jesus Christ uh, tried to correct them to let them know that he is going to die. Okay, that everything the woman has done has he has done it in his memory. Just it's like it's, it's more is more meaningful than what they think. So Jesus Christ made a promise to that woman that anywhere in the world where they'll be talking about his death, they'll be talking about him, that they will definitely mention just the woman's name, and we are doing it today. And Jesus Christ also gave um, Judas chance to repent, because he keeps saying that one of you will betray me, one of you will betray me. But Judas, because he loved money, and because he's not genuine. So that's why it's really important, you know. And sometimes you see us praying, it's really important. Oh Lord, every evil person in my life, in my group, oh Lord of your remove them, remove them. You know, we do all this prayer because there's Judas everywhere today. So they are all repentant people, they are there, you know, some they will disguise as our friend. We saw how you how Judas betrayed Jesus Christ, he came and he kissed Jesus Christ. So when he kissed Jesus Christ, we think probably he loved him, but he actually does not love Jesus Christ. He was there, you know, to betray Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ gave, you know, told them a lot of things that will happen, you know, to them. You know, he told them about the future, how Peter will deny him three times, and it all came to pass. And we even saw how the mystery behind, you know, the, you know, the, um, the Holy Communion. So the Holy Communion that we take today, the mystery behind it is in Mark chapter 14 from verse 30, 22 to 27. So after this program, we can go back and read it again. You know, when you read it, you understand it better. So now you know why we do it in church. Jesus Christ said we should be doing it for his, the memorial of him. So Jesus Christ did that, you know, just to empower, you know, the disciple to, pl to you know, to prepare them for the challenges ahead because Jesus Christ was taken away from them. Um, let's read the, the last part. Um, I want the um, Damola to read it quickly. That's 82. On um, 62 to the end, and I will ask if you know how to say something about it, and I will round up the class. I will call two pers um, people to explain, and that will be the end of our program tonight. Our time has far spent. So, Damola, are you ready, darling? 
And Jesus said, I am, and, and you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And then the high priest tore his clothes and said, What need have we any further witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What think you? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. And some began to spit on him, you know, and down, to cover his face, and to comfort him, and to say unto him, Prophecy. And the gods did strike on him with the palms of their hands. And as Peter was below in the in the courtyard, there came one of the maid servants of the high priest, and he said, and when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, and said, and you, you also were with Jesus of Nazareth, but he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what you say. And he went out into, onto the porch, and the cock cried, and the maid servant saw him again, and began to say to them that stood by, this is one of them, and he denied it again. And after a little, they all that they that stood by, and said to again to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a uh, gallery, and your speech agrees with it. But he began to curse and swear, saying, I know not of this man who you speak. And the second time, of the the crowd crowd, and Peter called to the mind. The, the words that Jesus said unto them before the cross twice, you shall deny me three times. And when and when he thought on this, he wept. Good. Let's clap for the moment. Well done. God bless you. God bless you. So if you're Lua, do you want to explain, my darling? Do you want to explain what you understand by that part? It's just straightforward. If you're Lua, so if your Lua is not there, okay, let me just explain, um, well, what um, Damala just explained how, you know, Peter actually betrayed Jesus Christ. So Peter that said, I will never betray you, I'm with you to the end of the world, I love you so much, Master, you, you know, you are my everything, it betrayed Jesus Christ. But, but fortunately for him, he wept, he, he felt bad. So sometimes when we do something that is not good, we feel, we, we should... If it's possible for us, we should apologize. If it's not possible, we should kneel down and ask God for mercy. So do not let us... Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's good when you feel bad, you feel remorse and, you know, and repent. Because sometimes we feel remorse and we do it again and again. That's wrong. So we feel bad and we should try, you know, to change. You know, not to repeat that thing. Probably, probably you've disappointed your friend. Yes, she told you something. It was supposed to be a secret, but... You just lick it out because you trusted the third person and you know you know and you know you mess up so in that situation all you just need to do is you can call your friend you are sorry for what you've done and you pray god have mercy on me and if you've called her she's angry she doesn't want to listen to you that's fine but go to god and make sure that you don't repeat that again let god see your heart that knows you felt really bad for what you've done and then you've changed your mind and your friend should be able to forgive you anyway if truly you guys are friends so um, we've learned a lot about the life of Jesus Christ, his disciples and everything. And I believe we are blessed tonight. But before we go, I'm just going to call two people, you know, to talk. So I'm calling Emanuela. So Emanuela, you tell me what you've learned so far. And uh, in your way, is your sister there? Yes, she's... Oh, she's there. Okay, if you're Lua, if you're, um, if you're Lua, you want to explain what you've learned so far tonight, just say something. I want to engage you. I need you to talk. Miriam, you say why, dear darling? Um, okay, that's fine. I think she's probably she's the one just connecting. Oh, it's okay. Um, Damola. Um, if you already want to talk, darling. If you're Lua, okay, now let me just call on Emmanuel now. Meet yourself and talk. But a lot of you learned so far, we said so many topics, we've said so many things. What is that thing that really touched your heart that you can you take home tonight? 
So I probably call I've everybody. Just, just, just. You tell me what one thing that you feel you are taking home tonight. If mommy has to, oh, that might like connected tonight. They want to tell me what you've learned from Sir Joyce class. Oh, you might know that talk. I've learned that any small thing can be a really big thing in heaven. It's just as long as you give, pour your heart into it, and that you really believe in God and trust in God. And also that there are a lot of fake people in the world, hmm. but you just have to pray to God to protect you from them. And you just have to continue to thank God for everything and then you'll be fine. And you should also be careful that you don't get yourself mixed up with them hmm. so that nothing can happen to you. Hmm. Thank you, my darling. Let's start for Emanuela. That's good. Great attempt. Good, good, good. So I'm calling... Um... Miriam, Miriam, do you want to explain what you plan tonight, darling? In, briefly, so you don't have to go into detail. So. Um, I've learned to learn from Peter's mistake, actually, because he thought that he wasn't going to, he was not going to the side, he thought he was just going to actually stand up with Jesus, but when the time came, he actually um, didn't stand up and ended up lying to himself that he was stand up and knew he was just afraid. I think I've learned is to never be afraid of Christ because Christ is, you know, your shield. He's anywhere you need your rock. So it's important to make sure that you trust him. If you don't trust the Lord, then you're going to end up letting yourself down. Hmm. That's what I've learned. Thank you so much, darling. Thank you so much. So um, she said it all because what happened is if, if um, Peter has not betrayed Jesus Christ, probably something great will have happened, you know, in the life of um, Peter. Probably God will have empowered him because anyway, he's not going to die anyway, because it's not in the scripture that he's going to die. It's not written. It's, it was written that Jesus Christ was to die. So that's why Jesus Christ died. So and everything in life work according to the plan of God for our lives. But unfortunately, she betrayed Jesus Christ. She, she, that's why the fact that she, she, she lied to himself because, you know, but then we thank God that he was able to repent at the end of the day. So that's fine. Thank you, Miriam. Let's laugh for her. Good, good, good. So let me call Sharon, darling. Do you want to tell me, darling, what to plan tonight, my love? So if you're Lua, she'll be ready now. After Sharon. Well, I've learned to know that we should always believe in God and God can always change our life if something bad happens. And that we should always have faith in Him and we should always um, keep on life to be holy. And we should always live a holy life and not be like any other bad person online that you see. And you should just be yourself. Good. Thank you so much. Let's laugh for Sharon. Let's laugh for her. Ah, good, 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 good. So we shouldn't be like Judas is Carol. We shouldn't be fake. We should be real. Good. So now, um, if you're Lua Dali, you want to tell me something that you, like, just one thing that, you know, that um, you want to take home tonight. We shouldn't follow the crowd and that we should be ourselves, that we shouldn't do what other people are doing, that we shouldn't do bad things, and that we should live a godly life that's centered on, on God and not other people. Good. We shouldn't betray other people. So we should live our life, you know, for God. We should live, we should not live in, in um, follow the crowd. You know, we should not be con conver um, um, convertious because uh, Judas was convertious because of the love of money. That's what has pushed into that level. Thank you, darling. Let's clap for Sharon. Let's clap for um, Ifeoluwa. That's great. Well done. So now I'm just going to call um, Inioluwa, our little Ini. Ini, don't tell me what you've learned tonight, darling. Ini, baby, what, what have you learned? Say something. I do not have... <laughs> That Jesus died on the cross. Jesus died. We learned the story of how Jesus Christ died. Good. Let's stop for your body. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> so Damala summarized the class. <laughs> Damala summarized it. <laughs> Damala summarized the class. Um, so in this class, what we are doing was just we are um, looking at how Jesus was betrayed and how um how all of the how he how he died and how he was lied about and how he was shaped so badly just to fulfill the just to fulfill the um the scripture just to fulfill the scriptures mm, good thank you darling god bless you so everything we've learned tonight children you can create time to read it again so you have better understanding 
So your assignment will be, you know, to read, um, you know, uh, chapter 15. So chapter 15 will tell you everything that happened. That just guys was, it's a very lovely story and you will enjoy it, okay? Good. So let's pray and then uh, because our time has, uh, is already 9 o'clock or past 9 safe. So close your eyes, let's thank God for tonight. Thank God for the grace God has given to you to connect. Close your eyes and pray. Lord, I thank you for the grace you have given me to connect. Lord, I thank you because I have not connected from hospital. You know, some people are also to bed, but I've connected, you know, in good health. We thank God for the grace. Thank God for the opportunity. Many children can't connect tonight because they have found a same in Iraq, you know, where there's war, there's no evil laptop, there's no internet, or less of, you know. Thank God. Lord, we thank you for your goodness over our lives. Lord, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus, for all our children that's connected tonight. Thank you for those that couldn't connect because we know that next week they will connect. Father, Lord, we Amen. thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. We have to pray a point later and that's how we share the grace. One prayer point we're going to tell God, Lord, help me to know you more. Lord, help me. Give me the grace to read about you. And as I read about you, Lord, I don't want to read you like a story, but I want to know you better. I want to live you, the, the kind of life you want me to live on heart. Close your eyes today and pray. Lord, give me the grace. As I'm reading your Lord, word. I pray that you give me Lord, help me. Help me so that I'll be like you. To have a because you are the author and the finisher of my sin. Lord Jesus, I pray, oh Lord, that you help me to be like you, to read your word, to study you, give me the grace to do your will, to do your purpose on heart in the name of Jesus. We pray for all our children, our teenagers, we pray they shall be distinct for good, for greatness in life. They shall do your will, they shall fulfill your purpose. They shall be known, yes, as your children, wherever they find themselves in the name of Jesus. You help them. Oh Lord, as they seek you, they will know you. As they seek you, they will find you. Lord, we will pray, oh Lord, that you bestow your grace upon them and their families in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. The last prayer we are going to pray for glory sustain children. That God will increase, God will expand us. We are praying for more children to connect us. And uh, we pray again for, we remember our parents who have been supporting us, some of our parents have been supporting us, you know, financially. Some they'll be sharing our, you know, talking about us to other people, you know, trying to invite other families, you know, to us. Let's pray that God will bless them. God will bless this, um, this um, organization. Close your eyes and begin to pray. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We love Christian 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 Christian. Christian. You bless us, and you expand us, you will connect us with the people that matter in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh Lord, we don't want any help, parent, but we know the parents you will take our life for our destiny. Father, Lord, we pray you connect us with them in the name of Jesus. We pray the prayer you will be using for us, oh Lord, we pray you bless them in the name of Jesus. We pray you prosper them in the name of Jesus. Those that do not have, oh Lord, at this point in time, Father, we pray you remember them, oh Lord, and you bless them as well. Bless all our children. Bless us, O Lord. I pray for your blessing upon my life. Lord, bless me. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's share the grace, children. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the spirit of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. So you are now going to point to me. I'll point to you now. So you point to the screen. So surely, let's just share it together. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Damola. Let's clap for Jesus, everybody. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. So I look forward to seeing you next week. Please don't miss your class. And if you want to join the kids' class as well, like Ifeo Lua did today and um, Ini, you can join. Okay, God bless you. Love you so much, children. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye for now. Bye, darlings. Bye bye. 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 Good night. Good night.